And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's Talk Hookup right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the mightier 1090 ESPN radio. Pete Gray here along with Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and the world headquarters. Let's Talk Hookup overlooking the San Diego landings where several of the long-range boats are unloading fantastic catches right now. Captain Brian Woolley from Dana War Sport Fishing is here having a great time and giving away a phenomenal prize. Thanks yeah, to Brian. man, if you didn't catch that at the beginning of the show, how about one lucky call? Caller or texter at the at the end of today's show is going to win not one but two two three quarter day passes. You and a bro get to go fishing on a three quarter day trip. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Out of Dana War Sport Fishing, so really exciting. Again, that uh, prize is open to a caller or a texter. If you want to give us a call this morning, it has been a very busy morning, but we got another full hour, plenty of time to get you through. It's two one three. 432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090 is the phone number. Or send us a text. And again, text the show option. It's only available through the Let's Talk Hookup app. Free download. Just make sure when you send us a text that you have your name and your phone number on there. So if you win that big prize at the end of the show, we can get you uh, we can get you all hooked up with those three quarter day it. passes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Let's jump into the phones. Phones are packed, man. We got it. We're going to talk to Mike. He's calling us from Rosemead this morning. Mike, thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning. Thanks for picking up my line. Good morning, guys. Um, you know, the question initially was basically on the theory, and I always go out on it at least once a year on a charter, so um, it's always nice to go out there. Um, can you kind of elaborate on how, how the, the harbor there is, is doing as far as I know they're revamping all the slips in the inner harbor and um, the congestion with all that. Is that all completed now? And anything to do with the... Uh, can you just kind of mention about the closures when the uh, military closes out San Clemente? What do you guys do Got on it. that? So I know, uh, yeah, Marcus, when he fishes over there at Clemente, he, he obviously, as, as any captain would fish that island, does they do their due diligence and, you know, get online and check and see what's available, what's open, what's closed. And, you know, monitoring their radios, I think it's important for everyone that fishes over there, you know, to, to just stay you know, in tune with what's going on over there. Did they have to move around a little bit when they were over there this year? Yeah, they did. Um, is it a bummer? Yeah, it is. But, you know, it's an opportunity to, you know, fish over there is is certainly bigger than, you know, not playing by the rules. So, you know, he's very, as everyone I think in the entire fleet is over there, you know, do do what you got to do to to stay, you know, compliant over there and move around. And, yeah, it's probably an inconvenience sometimes, but it is what it is. You just got to deal with that. Um as far as the harbor revitalization goes, yeah, they've, you know, removed some docks up in the West Basin over there. They're, you know, feverishly working away at doing stuff. They haven't really started on any of the, uh, like, major construction, I think, with, uh, you know, buildings and whatnot. I'm not real up on, you know, the behind the scenes. I'm just talking on what I've seen, you know, visually that they changed. And, yeah, they, they put some new docks in. It's amazing. Stuff looks really good. Um as far as any completion date, I have no idea any of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, the the ball is rolling in that, and they're 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 and that, working away. That's only all owned by the city of Dana Point. So it's the harbor is owned by the county. The county. Yeah, but there's a managing company that that manages the harbor for the, harbor. the county. So uh-huh. what their calendar is or what their their deal is, I have no idea. That's out of my scope of worry yeah right yeah <laughs> but i uh, i know they're working in there it, it'll from what i've seen it's supposed to be super nice when it's done so it'll be cool to kind of see so the harbor good. department there is a, is, a, is is county sheriffs or yep. is it or orange is it county their sheriff. own they're yeah, orange, orange county, county sheriff. sheriff okay yeah that yeah. patrols it and keeps tabs on everything in there. yeah that's yep. cool well this next great text kind of rolls off of that same question good morning gents uh could you describe the parking situation at dana wharf uh i'm loving this show and i'm thinking about coming up from san diego never had an opportunity to fish at dana wharf sport fishing before but i love all this great information also, are there light load trips, um, and can I do any catch and release with fish on the boat or giving my fish to other anglers if I'm not interested in taking home? That's all from Ted in San Diego. Got it. So parking is free for us. It's uh, 
it's close. You know, you get parked. That's maybe, huge. The best. Maybe 200 yards from our offices is, is where the parking. And plenty of it. Plenty of it. So you can park in. The, you can pull up in the morning, get your ticket, get your you know tackle and whatnot in line at the the ramp there by the boat, and then go move your car. We give you a permit. It's close. It's right by the launch ramp. If you're familiar. So you with, want it. So where. so when you go there, you check in at the office first. Park your car in the yep. 45 minute Whatever, or one yeah. hour parking. Exactly. Go check, check in, in at the we'll office. Give you a parking permit in the morning with your ticket or whatever, and then you can you know go move your car, and then you know come back and, and line up before we load you and, on the boat. And the move your car part was the couple hundred yards. Yeah, I mean, that's easy. the thing. Like it, it the parking yeah. at Dana Wharf is fantastic. The, it's easy. There's plenty of it. Yeah, there's always spots right up in front, and and then when you yeah when you move your car, you're moving. That's the that's the big distance is the couple yeah. hundred yards. You're right there. It's, Parking is so bad. killer. So. Um, there's that part. What was the other part of the, uh, the uh, limited load, limited load, limited load trips, trips. catch and release. Thing. So yeah, catch and release. We have a lot of catch and release, um, that goes on with our anglers. Um, as far as giving fish away too, if you, if you want to do that, yeah, you know, we, we would just as soon see a catch it and put it back over the side is, is, you know, we have a lot of guys that will, you know, catch, Hey, do you want this? And try and give it away. That that's between those two anglers. We don't really facilitate, you know, managing that for, for the angler. Cause again, it's, it's your fish. You're responsible for, you know, making sure you're within the scope of what the law is. We'll help you with that. But we, we prefer just to see it. You know, you want to throw your legal bass back. That's cool. There's zero pressure from us on our end. Like, we're not all about the the dollar on the flay board or whatever for for the bass. We just soon see it throw it back and, and yeah. go from there. Go catch so, yeah, it doesn't day. matter. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. And then the last part of his question was, uh, do you guys do any kind of limited load light trips? Limited load light trips. We do uh, some stuff during the summertime, like offshore. We run some limited load stuff. Um, all day trips, 25 angler type deal um, on some of our all day stuff. And it so, sounds like that new San Mateo. That's a real light that load. New, new San Mateo will run with 10 people. That's pretty limited load. That's uh, you know always an option too during the summertime as well. So we try and put those trips up on our social media and whatnot, and kind of get those those trips out there when they're available that time of year when they're they're relevant. Cool. Great. Let's jump back in the phones. The line open two one three four three two ten ninety. Roy in San Diego's up next here on Let's Talk Hookup. Roy, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How, How are you doing, doing today? Good morning. Great. Good. Quick question. I'm kind of thinking of jumping on a, a rock cut trip tomorrow and stuff, and I want to try and use one of my level lines, but my level lines are the smaller, uh, low profile, like a Chang's 400 and a uh, Fathom 400. Do either of those reels have the line capacity and or the torque to do, like, you know, the, 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 rock, the rock fish trips now, like three, 600 feet or whatever? Uh, maybe not that 600 feet. You can fish that shallow, shallower stuff. You know that that 300 and you know less or whatever for sure. I think just you get away with your 30, 40 pound uh, braid and a you know an adequate leader. You know you don't need a long leader when you're fishing that rockfish. I think you could get away with that 400. I, I would think there's absolutely probably plenty of line to, to to fish that. So I think you hit the nail on the head. The key is that real skinny spectra. You know that you're talking 30 pound braid. You're going to get a lot of that line on the reel, and the diameter is so skinny that it cuts through the water real good. And you can, you know, you can you you can get down easier with lesser sinker. And you know if you're fishing a rod that's matched to a Tranks 400 or or something similar, then you're usually not using a super beefy rod, so it's tougher. To fish a you know a 12 ounce right. or 16 ounce sinker but you know because that spectra is so skinny you can get down okay with a six or an eight or a ten you know so yeah Just kind of scale it down a little bit yeah so plenty plenty of opportunity with that setup for that sure tranks 400 for your shallower stuff and then bring something that you can fish six seven hundred feet with which yeah and in the, in the days that we're fishing out in that deeper water you know is when we have a lighter passenger load anyways uh-huh. just because of the amount of you know gear in the water it's uh-huh. hard it's hard to fish you know, 100 fathom when you have 25 people in boats, yeah. it's just not worth it. So how much? How much? How many ounces of lead are you fishing? I mean, we're fishing minimum a pound. Yeah. You know, so but with that's the where it starts. That's where it kind of starts. Current dependent, of course, but man, that today's tackle with that braided line has made such a difference oh, in being able to get that stuff down. And, with, and for the sport of it of too, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, and it's the same thing. Like Rick was just talking, that shallower water with that smaller braid, you can scale down your sinker, and that's yeah. kind of you know even on the deeper side of things, you know. That braid, you can still scale down. You don't need a, a five-pound sinker anymore to get to the bottom. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Roy, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does three up, 213-432-1090. I have a great text here from Tom and Temecula. He says, good morning, guys. On your cod trips, is there a descending outfit to get cow cod safe and other fish safely yeah. returned? Yeah, we use those uh, very frequently. We have we use that sequelizer. Sequelizer. We'll, uh, sometimes, depending on where we're fishing and what we're catching, you know, we'll We'll have a ganyan, you know, we'll have two or three of those things tied on, one 
one piece of tuna cord and, uh-huh. you know, pound and a half of weight and send them on down. So, so, yeah. so is that something that the angler is responsible for doing? Or no, you guys we, do we, we'll help, help you with that. It. Yeah, you don't need to worry about bringing that kind oh, of stuff. Nice. Um, we, we have that all set up and ready to go on all of our boats when we're out there fishing, fishing yeah. rockfish for those those fish that we got to descend. All right, cool. That's cool. All right, let's jump right back into them. And this time we're going to talk to Bob, Long Range Bob, calling us from Dana Point. Good morning, the Bob. Long Range Bob. Tell me this is the wolf man. Uh, the wolf good man, yeah. 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 Hey, good morning. Uh, What's up, Bob? What's up? Yeah. Well, one time uh, a few years ago, we were catching a bunch of yellowtail at Box Canyon. You, re- you remember that trip? Uh, I do. Uh, I remember watching Brian? you get your fair share. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, and what what kind of conditions are you needing for that to happen again? So that was an interesting deal. We we had come off of uh, an El Nino summer, remember, and then we saw all that red crab had kind of pushed in on that hard bottom. Um, and for whatever reason, that red crab was up here, and it seems like those yellowtail are synonymous with the, that red crab, especially, you know, when that stuff's down off Baja. And I just think that body of water that year was something, you know, commensurate with what you find off like Colonnade or, you know, somewhere like that. And that water was just there. That feed was there and that fish was, was there with it too. So that water, you know, it was kind of a mild winter too. I don't think the water got incredibly cold. It was similar to what we're seeing now, but, uh, you know, I don't think we came off a, a comparable, you know, summer El Nino, maybe next winter, you know, the, there's all this talk of this potential El Nino for this summer, you know, yeah. they're, they're saying it's supposed to be a, a pretty impressive pretty good one. deal. So maybe if those conditions, you know, run through, um, this summer, maybe next, you know, fall. Cause I think we fished that stuff in like December in 2015 was when that stuff was really biting down there. So maybe it'll be a, a deal too. It'd be good to get you back out there, Bob, and get you tied up to some of those things again. There you go. Hey, thanks. Absolutely. Nice to hear from you, Bob. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, that does free up 213-432-1090. Rick? Yeah, uh, great times this morning. Again, if you want to send us a text, too, very busy on the text, and uh, it's been really good. We had a great one right here. It says, good morning, Willie. I had another great season fishing at Dana Wharf. From the Fury uh, to our charter with you on the Sum Fun, my question is, how do you decide whether or not to take your full-day trips to Catalina or stay around San, o- San Ofre? Uh, I really like fishing the local islands whenever possible. I uh, can't wait to see you again in 2024. That's from Sean in Blossom Valley. Cool, cool. So our all-day stuff... You know, depending on the time of the year is going to kind of dictate on what we do. Kind of like uh, early summer when that, you know, offshore fish maybe isn't up in our zone quite yet, we'll probably end up at Catalina. We'll, uh, you know, end up somewhere over there targeting that bass, yellowtail, bonito, barracuda, uh, that kind of stuff. Later in the uh, the summer to early fall is when uh, we'll probably, you know, shift gears depending on what's available to us on those offshore banks. You know, we, we've got incredible fishing on that, that 209, the 277, out, uh, you know, to that 312, which is was a phenomenal zone for that bluefin and yellowfin this summer. We had some really good fishing out there, and it, it was close. You know, we were fishing inside of 25 miles there. Um, so it all depends on time of year and, uh, you know, what the water temp is and, and what's in that water. You know, we're not going to just go offshore depending on what the, uh, you know, the charter wants to go offshore and we'll go look around. We just try and set them up with, you know, their options, right? What's best with, with the time frame that we have and, and what's available to us. So, yeah, we're not going to drag you offshore if it's not, you know, conducive to, to what we're going to do. All right. Hey, the Iron Man, Gary White from Lawndale, uh, says, Good morning, everyone. Years ago, the power plant made warm water area, and with the shutdown of the power plant, did that affect fishing in that area? It's you know, it's, it is yeah, a good it question. Is. There's, you know, there was kelp. You know, persistent kelp is, is a thing, right, having kelp in certain areas. And I, I can tell you, I don't know if it's related or not, but there was a massive kelp bed off San Onofre when they were running the water in and out of that, that station. On that same little area of hard bottom in like 8 to 10 fathom, you can drive around. There's not a string or a kelp huh. growing off that hard bottom. It's crazy. It's just barren. Really? Um, I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know if it, it has to do with the way that water was, you know, pushing spores moving and moving spores. stuff around or, or not. I don't know. Um, I'm not the kelp yeah, professional sure. what a trip by that any is, means. Though. But those areas that we've had just crazy thick kelp um, off that San Onofre area, it, it's not there. It's gone. It's gone. Kelp's such a wild thing in that it grows so fast and that given the right conditions, it can flourish and be thick as you can imagine 
or just not there right. at all. It's, and it's what wild. was so crazy is, right, you think cooler water. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you would and think we had be... a cold winter right. last year, and it, it, it didn't grow. It didn't is it back. urchins on the bottom? I don't know. I'm not at the bottom. Yeah, I don't right, know. Right, right, but, right. Um, was, the, was the water warmer in that, in that zone? I mean... The water would come out of the pipe. I don't know what tempo would come out of the pipe at, right? Yeah. But you, you would think that by the time it, you know, kind of trickled up and got to the surface, yeah, maybe it was a little bit warmer, but did it make not, that much not, of a difference? I, I, don't, I don't really know. But maybe your theory about the currents that it created. Yeah, certainly when that, that, that thing that was on, sense, you please. could see the water movement at the surface for sure when they were, you know, moving water around within it created you know, current for us. And we were able to fish bass and that kind of stuff. But yeah, those areas there where there used to be kelp when that plant was there is not there. Is it related? I don't know, but it's just, is it coincidental? Maybe. I don't know. I remember the first time I was cruising up there in the early days when the power plant was going and came across, came across the area where the pipe was coming out and just these big swirls. And I thought, Oh, I'm going up on the rocks. Right. 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 (laughs) But, uh, but no, just the, all the all just the all the outflow, out. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, connect did something actually amazingly enough good for the environment. Right. Yeah. Who right? knows? Yeah. But the structure's still there. We still fish it. We we'll yeah. still catch plenty of fish on it. But the water's That's just good. not moving in and out yeah. of it like it was. That's good. Well. Look it's who's time. on the line. It's time, man. No doubt. It's time for your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen. And today, that fishdope.com catch report is sponsored by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. The all new and easier online system to book your processing for long range trips. Plus the new addition of the great new team members that are going to continue to make Fisherman's Processing far ahead of the rest for more same day capacity and the finest customer service. You can stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or check Fisherman's Processing. Com for more information. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning, Brian, Rick, Pete. Kelly girls love and listening to you, Brian. It, she just misses Dana Point so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special place. Gang, no doubt. Absolutely. Something you all need to understand that are listening. There's something special about Dana Point. You can get on Brian's boat, and you can literally be fishing in the ocean in five minutes. Yeah. There's no other harbor on the coast like that. That no. That's the most magical thing about Dana Point. When those bass are biting on the pipe right in front of the harbor, it's pretty magical. You can get on the boat, order a cheeseburger, and your cheeseburger isn't even done by the time you're fishing. Yeah, it's the, crazy. The deckhands hate the captain for that, right? They're like, i got so many people to get set up, and you're telling them to drop the anchor already. Yeah, totally. yeah. Oh, yeah, they used to hate me. And if you, you showed up and you weren't in a good mood in the morning and the wind was blowing offshore and it was freezing, I would park there just because. Yeah. But, <laughs> just because you're Dave. I absolutely do. <laughs> yes. I absolutely do. Yes, yes. We're going to stop right here. We're on a three-quarter day, Cap. I know. I said I know. We're going to start here on the pipe. Yeah, we're just going right to give you a quick check. <laughs> Freeze the attitude out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the good old days. But, gang, like Brian was saying, there is such a phenomenal sign of halibut. That the halibut fishing at Catalina right now is absolutely ridiculous. You can actually plan your day around catching halibut, which is pretty spectacular. We we got to talk about it a little bit last year, but this year it's it's full speed again. It's pretty spectacular. And that halibut derby going off at Dana Wharf starting January 1st, I think it would be silly if you're going on a trip and you don't buy a halibut derby ticket. That would be kind of silly because the chances, like Ricky was saying, anywhere you fish in Dana Point, you got a good chance to catch a halibut. And then as far as other fishing goes, it's still really good calico bass fishing over at Catalina and along the coast if you find the right conditions, fly line baits, and then – uh like Brian was talking about earlier, the, the uh, rockfish fishing is really, really good, and we only got, what, a week and a half of that, and then we're going to have to take off for three months on that. But that doesn't mean there's not going to be fish to catch. There's going to be plenty of stuff to do. Like Brian was saying, there's all kinds of fish to catch at Dana Point, halibut, sheephead, sculpin. There's plenty of fish up and down the coast, so there's no reason to not go fishing when they close the rockfish thing. You just got to roll with the punches, and there's always – there's never not a time to go fishing. You got to go yeah, fishing. Yeah, that's for sure. And 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 so yeah. let's clarify that. So starting January first for three months, uh, the rockfish season closes. Right. What can you catch? We know you can catch halibut. Yep, the halibut. Oh, obviously, bass is open. Sculpin will be on the table um, as Sheephead? it is now. Sheephead is closed, closed. until March first. We'll oh, be closed March first. Okay, so two months. Yep. Yep. 
But, but you know what? You can catch them. Yeah, you just got to release them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yep. it's fine. Yep. Most people release everything they catch nowadays anyway, so why not go? Totally. Yeah. Everybody but Dave, right? <laughs> I'm not even going to touch all. that one, Pete. I'm not yeah. touching that. Are, what is it, are we talking to a kinder, gentler David right now? <laughs> no, not at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> but my sister was like, hey, we're doing a release tournament out of Dana Wharf. I'm like, you're doing a what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> good old days. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. Change, I wouldn't right? fly on the seahorse. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't understand that. Well, whatever it is, whether you want to know regulations, <laughs> what's biting everything, fishdope.com is your source. They have all the regulations, all this, they'll keep you guided in the right direction, photos of what you can, what you can't take, all that stuff is at fishdope.com. Price is going up. January 1st to 199 a year. Still a super good bargain. Yeah. But if you want to take advantage of the deal right now, you can add to your membership another year to your membership right now, whether your membership expires today, you can add an extra year for the old price of 169, save 30 bucks before January 1st. Or use the code HOOKUP NOW if you're a new Fish Dope member to save 30 bucks. And Dave, how do we find you? Well, gang, check me out. Your Saltwater Guide on every piece of social media and also your Saltwater Guide if you want to quit following Brian Woolley around and actually find your own fish. Thank you, Pete, Rick, and I'll talk to you guys next Sunday on the big holiday extravaganza. Yeah, yeah. okay, so what is Dave Hansen going to have for a take next Sunday, huh? <laughs> Might have to stay right on that little button, Rick. <laughs> Might have to stay right. <laughs> oh, sure always ready. I'm sure it'll be fun. All right, you guys. Thank Thanks. you very we'll much for having me on the show. Yeah. Christmas spectacular. See you, Dave. It'd be fun for sure. See you guys. All right. Great. Let's jump back on the phone. Hey, that sounds good to me. If you want to get your shot to get through, talk to Captain Wooly and have your shot at winning those trips. 213-432-1090. Open phone line right now. Let's talk to Bruce. He's calling us from Lemon Grove. Hey, Bruce. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, guys. Great show as usual. Uh, Captain uh, Brian, um, what do you think the size increase from 12 inches to 14 has done to the fishery there? Um, that That's a good good, good question. question for sure. You know, certainly it's benefited, you know, the, the mass of both that kelp bass and, and the sand bass. Um, we, we've seen a ton of fish. There's obviously no shortage of of calico bass on the coast whatsoever. I think that the change from the the 10 fish to five fish was probably, you know, a good call, you know, but, uh, it's certainly helped. One thing that, you know, those fish have a mortality rate, right? Like there's only so many times you can catch a short fish and safely take a hook out of it and release it and catch it again and release it. That might not be great for the fish. So, you know, uh, someone told me, I don't remember if it was, crook or, or somebody that you know those fish have a 20 percent mortality rate when, when they're caught w- with rod and reel on a hook right so you, you would think if you catch that same fish five times if it's undersized eventually one of those times it's right. not going to be great for the fish right yeah. so i don't know i i think it's it's great long term 100 percent for the fish um but i think the the bigger move that was probably the better move was that change from the five the f- ten from to the five. ten to the five yeah, yeah for sure for sure but I mean, it's good. We, have, we we don't have a problem with it. So I mean, when you said a, yesterday you released 200 bass, 200 bass was that under size, under 14 inch bass? Yeah, those were fish that were under. Some of them were probably right there. Some yeah. of them were probably legal, and they just said, you know, I I'm just going to put it, it back. And we okay. didn't, you know, we, we'd rather than take the fish off and and lay it up against, you know, something to measure it before we throw it back. We'd right. rather just get the hook out of it as fast as we can yeah. and get it back in the water anyway. So some of those were for sure probably legal fish. Yeah. Um, but you know the one that went home with the anglers are the ones that we report as, you know, kept fish. Yeah. So. yeah. You know illegal when you see it, or at least one totally. that's one that's over legal. There's no you know, there's no question and right. like you say, why 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 bother holding everyone up when half of them are an eighth over and half of them are an eighth, an eighth under? Yeah. Just chuck that thing back. And and, just throw it back. And there's some times in the summer you get down at some of those kelp spots like barn kelp, uh down there off North County and off Las Polgas or whatever there on, on Camp Pendleton where there's clouds of thousands literally thousands and thousands of calico bass behind the boat so it's not hurting um but yeah you know the the change is what it is but I, i'm sure long term it's definitely helping 14 inch 
calico bass is a nice fish. It's a good fish, That's for a sure. Good for fish, man. Yeah, totally. Pulls hard and fun times. Fun stuff, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Rick, you have one, huh? I thought so, yeah. It says, good morning, guys. Uh, Brian, can you tell us the type of setup that you prefer most for halibut? Is it similar to uh, sheephead? Do you like reverse dropper loop or Carolina rig? Also, what are your thoughts on three-way swivels and sinker slides? Also, how heavy a leader should I be fishing? That's all from John and Carson. Got it. I think uh, anything with... Less knots is better. So those three-way swivels, I mean, you just have multiple, you know, potential for failure, right, with with multiple knots. Um, just the, the cleanest, best setup, I think, is that reverse dropper loop. Tie the knot. You've got, you know, one knot and then your connection to your hook. It, it, it eliminates a lot of potential problems. It gives you the flexibility of changing your sinker like we kind of talked to earlier. Um, I think that's probably the best. Like, those store-bought leaders are, are great or whatever, but... We, we don't recommend those things. There's just too much potential for something. I mean, they're tied by a machine. You yeah, know, right. let, let us help you tie something on a boat that, you know, we, we know works and, and know will, will work for you. Um, you talked about having a snelled trap hook. Like, when when would you go? Is that only if you're fishing a mackerel? Like, when would you go to it versus not? Is it all about bait size? Or what, 100%. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, 100% bait size. If, if your baits, I think, I, I would say if something's like 10 to 10 inch sardine, I get some of that big, big bow honk, you might want to have a rod set up with, uh, you know, that, that trap hook. Um, some people will fish a trap hook no matter what size bait they're fishing. They just want that, you know, added benefit of, you know, not missing. in their head of not missing a bite, right? Does it make that much of a difference? You know, maybe those fish are going to inhale that bait, whether it's a, a six inch sardine or a, you know, 10 inch or 12 inch mackerel you know they're going to get that whole fish in there so just the, the key is having your your knots good and eliminating any potential failure but th- those swivels and stuff i think in theory swivels are a great thing but i, I think they're a freaking nightmare i'm with you it's on just the, too many knots. it's just too too much too many things and they don't work i don't think they work as well as you know you think they do with, you know, giving you that mobility and the line able to, to move and to spin around. I, I think it just creates more tangles in. You fishing mono, fluorocarbon? What do you fish? Guys will fish both. Um, I, I think fluorocarbon would be a good call. Is it necessary? I, I don't think so. Those those halibut are just so aggressive, and they're going to eat. If it's in front of them, they're going to eat it. They, they don't care if they see, you know, obviously they see two hooks and a big bait. Right. They, they don't care. They're, they're just wolfing down what's in front of them. Yeah. So it doesn't make a difference, maybe. I don't think it's necessary. I'm with you on the trap hook thing. Like, a, a big bait, there's, there's times you need it. If you're fishing a, you know, one-pound mackerel, like, sometimes you just have to have that trap hook rig. But for the most part, fishing a sardine, the fish that you're fishing for has no problem eating that, totally. eating that bait. I'm sure, a 14, 18 incher. Like sometimes the trap hook is the reason you catch those ones, but that's not what you're. That's not, that's what, not what you're, you're intending to, right. to get in the first place. It, it it just always seems that way. Like, you know, you get people always talk about the halibut. Like, ah, oh, he's chewing on it. And he's moving the thing around, and like that that almost is never the way the bite happens when you get a real one. It's just no, you know, you're, yeah, thunk, and your rod doubles over. Yeah. Like, oh, I got that one. You know, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no doubt. Like the ones you're fishing for, they eat it. Totally. Hey, hey, when we come back, we got a lot of Let's Talk Hook Up left. More of your phone calls and texts. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hook Up, Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. We're on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hey, we're so lucky here in San Diego. We have fantastic weather and great fishing. We also have three great shops to take care of anglers. Hi, this is Ben, and you will see me at my dad's shop, Dana Landing in Mission Bay. We call it the one-stop shop for a great day on the water because it truly is. Food, bait, tackle, beverages, and more. Our tackle shop, headed by Johnny, is certainly one of the best. We have you covered from bay bass to big tuna. Plus, we have Doug, one of the finest reel repair guys around. For freshwater tackle, Nothing beats East County Bait and Tackle. Jeet and the guys have the best rod and reels, the hottest lures, and live bait. Our newest shop is Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle. Growing their stock of both fresh and saltwater tackle right in the heart of Lemon Grove. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, 94 to Broadway in Lemon Grove. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. Hello, anglers. It's not often second chances become reality when we are fishing. However, sometimes a second chance happens when you least expect it. This is Tim with Friends of Rollo, and several years ago, we raffled off Rollo's custom CalStar jig stick. The winner, Cliff Friend, was a longtime supporter of the Rollo program, and the family has just donated this rod back to us. 
Friends of Rollo is going to give someone a second chance to own Rollo's personal jig stick. Entering Rollo's Rod Raffle is easy. Simply purchase a book of 2024 Grand Raffle tickets and you will get an entry into the drawing. The winner will be drawn on December 24th. What better Christmas present to give yourself than a piece of fishing history? Books of tickets are $200, and Friends of Rollo will give each person that buys a book five tickets free. Tickets can be purchased by contacting us at win at rollokids.org or by calling 951-264-7382. On behalf of all of us at Friends of Rollo, good luck. Let's talk candidly about long-range fishing. This is Captain Frank DePresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long-range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top-notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shell Gun have the edge there, too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shell Gun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. Hi. Hi, this is Bill Varney, and when I'm not surf fishing, I'm at California's premier outdoor recreation shows. The Bard Hall shows January 25th through 28th at the Long Beach Convention Center and February 15th through the 18th at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Details at hallshows.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning talking fishing. Again, if you want to get through, give us a call at 213-432-1090. Yeah, and I uh, got a great text here from Alex in San Carlos. He says, good morning, guys. I'd love to take my niece and nephew out on their first half-day trip. Do you have any recommendations for us adults who want to take kids fishing to make sure they have a good time? What a totally. great question. Leave your fishing rod at home. Oh. Yeah, leave your right. rod at home. Spend, you know, the, the, the dads or the the parents that come out with us that spend like two, maybe three trips, right? Spending the time with their kids, showing them how to do all this stuff and Hooking not and worrying. Handed. Yeah, not worrying about what you're going to catch are the ones that down the road don't have to worry about because those kids become self sufficient. Okay. So the best advice we tell those is just leave your rod, spend all Bring your time. Bring your rod, but let your kid use let it. Let your kid use it. That's fine. Yeah. But just don't, yeah, don't worry about what you're going to catch that day. Spend all that time, you know, showing the kids what's up and showing them a good time. And that will. Just come back tenfold in what, you know, that opportunity is later. They, they will want to come back on a boat with you again um, and go again with you if, uh, you know, you spend that time with them now. 100%. How yeah. okay. good info is that? That's good That's from info. the guy that gets to see kids coming and having the good times. Yeah, and the, we and see the, it all. Yeah, I'll we bet. see the like, misery when the dad's is... trying to fish and he's frustrated out of his mind, frazzled, because he can be like, dude, you're missing the whole point yeah. of this thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, good advice. No so, doubt, man. Leave your rod at home. Concentrate on totally. the kids catching fish. Yep. Yeah, that's rad. Hooking right. in hand. Do you do? You guys probably do a lot of hooking in yeah, hand. Yeah, we do that right. for sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. We help those kids figure it out. It's all about yeah. the tug. Right? It's like anything. You spend a few minutes instructing and showing them, you know, how to do. Kids pick up on stuff fast, yeah. right? They're sponges. They they want to learn. They want to do it. And you know, you do something like that, fun with them, and they figure it out. And there there's no pressure. Then it just yeah multiplies like, that kind of yeah hundred times. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Hey, a great text come through. Hey to Pete, Rick, and Brian. Brian, can you talk a little bit about the different boats in the Dana Point fleet, including the newest additions, the Dana Pride and the new San Mateo? Also, are there any fish processing companies that are going to become available for the tuna fishing this year? Merry Christmas to all you guys. I can't wait. That's from uh, Joe from JLo Fishing Rods. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, Dana Pride. It's 20 years old. <laughs> really? Come on. Well, 2002, so it's 21 really? years old. Yeah, no. I was, oh, yeah, I was in my, you know, Mike Hansen's office the other day. We we're looking at the boat. We're like, man, I'm like, dude, that thing's 21 years Dude, old we, now. We're just talking about that. Like, yeah. it didn't, you know, I don't feel old enough Crazy. to know, like, yeah. to remember when that boat, you know, first tied up to the dock. 2002 is time. when, yeah, Dana Work took delivery of that boat. Yeah, it's wild. Um, and then that that new San Mateo would be the the newest addition uh, as far as the fishing goes. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the the the, the newest additions mm-hmm. to the fleet. 
But as far as the rundown, you know, the the Dana Pride, the Clemente, and the Sum Fund will run those half day and three three quarter day and all day stuff. And then the real fun, um, it's pretty much half day duty. Yeah, mm-hmm. they'll get some charters for three quarter day and stuff, but they're pretty much uh, half day. And that's such a cool old nostalgic I love that boat. boat. Yeah, it's totally. low to the water. Um, it's just a cool. It's just made boat. to be on a kelp it's, line it's fishing bass somewhere. It's so stuff. perfect. Yeah, it, it, it's sweet. So just you know. We all kind of do and everything. Fish processing, you guys take care of that on the boat for guys? We do it, yeah. We we keep uh, stuff cold as best as we can on the boat. Um, the new San Mateo does have a uh, you know RSW set up on there that wow. keeps that stuff frigid. Um, the other boats, we use kill bags and ice and... You know, it's so different if you're on your skiff mm-hmm. and you have your kill bag and ice. We do the same thing. Some of the no gunny sacks. I mean, we use gunny sacks too, but you know, yeah. for for our rockfish trips. But we hold tons of ice and we keep everything iced down. Yeah. And there's gone are the days of just trash. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. we, we do what we can to keep everything. So uh, what's the procedure? Pleasant. So you keep it in the gunny sack, tag it, and then put it in the in the in the, yeah. in the bag. In the kill bag, we'll do that on our charters. You know, we'll, we'll tag it and uh, or we'll have you know stringer and we'll string it up and drop it in the the ice the kill bag that way nice um, three quarter day stuff this time of year we you know keep the fish it, it, it's in the gunny sack but it's iced we just constantly keep putting ice oh, on top no of kidding. it so wow. it's, it stays cold it's, it's yeah. fine and it you know Works yeah the hard. weather it's sunny and not, but if you stay on top of that kind of stuff it, it stays perfect at the end just of the day nice white ice flavor yeah it. keep it cold yeah. that's the difference you, is you guys do that like you, you you take every little step and you do oh you know the guys are always taking care of that and you always take every step every step that's every step that's able to be taken it always happens at dana we try and do our best with that stuff, for sure. sure. Hey, uh, James in Lakeside has a question. I have a question about small octopus hooks for sheephead. Do you, do you recommend them? Um, I mean, small hook and sheephead sounds like your potential for disaster. You know, that, that stuff bends and straightens out and breaks. Um, just a, I think regular just a J-hook. regular J-hook, something sharp if you want to, yeah. you know, a, a gamagatsu, gotcha. you know. Yeah. Just a Something with a sharp like a, point or like even just a regular old... 2 one Yeah, 1 or a 2 depending on what you're using for bait. You yeah. know, if you're going to use a whole shrimp, you're going to you know beef up your hook size. But I don't necessarily know if those those smaller hooks are, are the key. Certainly, they, you know, they'll get you... You know, pierced and, and hooked up for sure, but strength wise, I don't know if that's maybe the best call for those things, especially when they're pulling hard. And those things, like they they they're designed to crush through crab and shrimp and everything else. You yeah. get some of those thin wire hooks, when they'll literally they'll, they'll bust Bite. through it, yeah. man. They they, yeah. they will. That thing ends up the in the jaws. wrong spot. They'll crush right through those. That jaw is like a vice. <laughs> yeah. They're badass. Yeah, they they're are. cool fish. They're amazing fish, yeah, for sure. All right, well, hey, why don't we jump back into the phones? This yep. time we'll talk to Charles, calling us from Dana Point this morning. Good morning, welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. <laughs> Good morning, guys. I love your show. It brings back a great deal of memories. Um, date myself 50 years ago, I fished out of Dana Wharf, and you could walk across the kelp all the way on down. So, my, my first question is about. About the uh, San Onofre Reef um, that they supposedly had built uh, after they closed the plant, I was wondering, has that ever, you mentioned there's no kelp, uh, but ha- has that proven to hold fish? Do you guys fish it? And now I'm going to ask you a second question. Whatever happened to all the sand bass? I remember, man, we used to go down there off of uh, trestles and whoa. Totally. And then the last one, I I don't think there's a funner trip in the world than going out on a full load party boat at night and catching those big humboat squid. That is a hoot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I mean yeah, that is wild. something that, that you stuff for sure. That's fun stuff. You know, when that stuff's around, we'll get out there and get after it. Um, as far as um. Sand bass. Kelp, sand bass, yeah. If you can solve that mystery, that's great. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, right. I know that it's you know it's it's a big trap fishery in Baja. It's 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 a huge fishery for those guys down there. So yeah. is is that part of the deal? I don't know, but I know that it's a very lucrative, you know, fishery for those guys um, in Mexico. Did you say a trap fishery? Yeah, they live fish trap that oh, stuff down there. Yeah, okay. you can go online and look some of that stuff up. It might blow your mind. I will. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as far as that whole reef program it's called the wheeler reef you can uh, go online and look that stuff up yeah we fish it yes there's kelp when i said there's no kelp i was just referring to one specific spot that we used to see it quite a bit that it's not there now through that wheeler reef that starts uh you know just above san mateo point and runs all the way up through san clemente to 
to well above the pier there, um, to almost Beach Road, if you know where I'm talking there in, uh, wow. in Capitol Beach. There's parts of that reef all through there. Yeah, it holds fish. Um, it's, there's kelp in it. The lob, commercial lobster fishing guys do very well on that reef. Um, it's healthy. Um, and yeah, there's fish there. So that was part of their whole project. So that was an mitigation. artificial reef. Oh, the mitigation. Yeah, it was mitigation for whatever, um, San for San Onofre. But yeah, there's. What there's was the reef made of? Just like old. So it's, it's rock. It's quarry rock from quarry rock. Catalina that they brought in and rolled out. It's the, the deal with it, it's, it's single relief. There's no big high spots that they uh-huh. built on it. They had to duplicate the reef that, you know, essentially they, whatever, I don't know who was a coast commissioner, whoever said was, you know, the, the mitigate the loss for whatever happened down there. They had to, you know, basically build it in the same depth and the same structure that it was down below. So there's no big high spots on it. It's all single relief rock and it's all kind of scattered and interspersed around existing hard bottom that was already there. Oh, oh so it's yeah. on top of the hard bottom. No, it's around it. So they didn't around dump it. it on top of the existing hard bottom. They just kind of, you know, butted it up again. But it's not miles of it, huh? There's miles. Yeah. yeah. Wow. From from basically just above trestles all the way up through San Clemente. Wow. That's crazy. It's That's massive. Crazy. And I think it's one of the biggest artificial reefs in the U.S., so yeah, go online and check it out. But it's it's giant. Wheeler Reef. That's Wheeler what Reef. Oh, yeah. Who was Wheeler? He was uh, one of the scientists. Other than Anthony he's, he's Ford. He's the guy yeah. that owns Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's one of the scientists uh, that was involved in the whole that's process. That's cool. I don't know all the details, okay. but yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Like from there's scripts plenty or like of that. info that you can pull up and get all yeah. the dynamics, all the factors that you know they're required to keep track of fish stocks, yeah. algae, kelp, all kinds of stuff that they're required to stay on top of. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, uh, text from <clears throat> Mike and San Juan Compostrana says, "Good morning, guys. Great show so so far. Dana Wharf is my local landing. I really enjoy fishing." Fishing with Brian on the Some Fun. Fishing areas around Dana Point and Harbor are super varied, and most captains change their fishing game plans on a daily basis. I was wondering what thought process that Brian goes through when he's deciding where to fish each morning. Got it. There's yeah, good lots question, of decisions right? to be yeah. made, right? Um, lots of factors. Um, bait factor, you know, live bait fishing, fishes, I think. Um, Better in certain areas than in other areas. Um, areas with the kelp, I think we'll fish that live bait, you no know, fly line fish, that stuff different than we would say in some areas where there's, you know, no kelp. Um, depends on the group of anglers that we have on the boat. If we have, you know, quite a bit of people where we can't get the boat into the kelp because, you know, we're more full. And then we might target some hard bottom areas where everyone can kind of get down to the bottom and get a bait out away from the boat without, you know, worrying about, you know, prime position across the back of the boat or, or something like that. And, um, you know, where did you have good fish in the day before? We'll come into, you know, making that decision at the end of the day. So lots of different factors. Yeah, sometimes it's it may seem like we had the same direction for whatever reason, but we try and spread the effort out. You know, if it's really good one way, we'll, we'll fish it until we maybe see something something change in a different area and just kind of adjust from there. So, yeah, day-to-day for sure, but uh, is one area better than the other? I, I don't necessarily think so. Just when we go up the coast, we are limited because of, uh, you know, the MPAs up through Laguna Beach. You know, we can only go so far before yeah. we, we hit that line and we can't fish. So um, there's more to fish below our harbor that's open, mm-hmm. obviously, than what's above. But there's times that we'll, you know, make the jump all the way through the closure and fish some stuff up, you know, Above Laguna, up through Crystal Cove, and and that's that zone too. Just kind of depends on what's going on. Um, we had a good text come through. It's a, it's a little long and, and was all over the place, but there was a part of it that that, that was uh, directed at the halibut derby, and it was just talking about really big halibut, and you know how like some areas are consistent with kicking out real big ones, Channel Islands and Clementi and things like that. And basically, his question was, what what is it about some areas that are synonymous with fish, you know, above Holy Grail size, fifty pounds, and why don't we why don't we necessarily see those fish sprinkled in all the way up and down the coast? That's a good question. You know, I. I is it I, all I, feed? Is it condition? I think feed and condition. You know, I think that fish does like the milder temperatures. It seems like, uh, you know, when we catch that fish consistently during our derbies, it's, you know, this derby is running from January through March, and the water is typically cooler. You have more bait, you know, out off of 
the you know out instead of being inside the shallower water where it is during the summer and the water's warm you know the our bait guys are setting and making their sets in tight you know because that's where the bait is when the water's warmer the water cools off that stuff moves out and i think that bigger fish is is out in that deeper water uh the commercial guys when they used to fish that stuff were fishing you know four or five hundred feet of water for for halibut back you know when they they were able to commercial fish that stuff out with their their nets and whatever but that fish moves for sure with the bait. Why there's bigger fish in certain areas, I don't know. But uh, it seems like we catch plenty of it when it's in our zone, and I think it's all interrelated to with where, where the bait's at at that particular time. You've been doing this close to 30 years. How many 50-pound halibut have you seen? Uh, I haven't seen a 50-pound halibut in our zone. We've seen some you know, high 30s, low 40s, like really? big, wow. big fish. Um, but I, I, our average fish... You know, eight to maybe twenty-five pounds is probably you know what we see nice in our fish. in our yeah. in our derbies. Yeah, there's been years where we've had you know five-pound fish, just barely legal fish, and you know fish up to twenty-five twenty-five inches. But you know, I think anything in that you know twelve to twenty-five pound range is is pretty standard for I, for what we catch through there. I just can't imagine fishing local and seeing a fifty-pounder 50 come. Pounder. I mean, just when when you see how big a twenty-pounder is or a thirty-pounder, yeah. it's just I, totally. I just can't imagine. A local fifty. Yeah. I've I seen want a, to. I've seen me. a thirty pounder, but I've nothing in it, yeah. even close to bigger than. Yeah, that. I mean that's massive. Yeah, it's a my, big uh, fish. My sister's first local halibut was a forty-two pounder. Oh, and it's the biggest one I've ever got to see. You know, squ- squid nest fishing. Calico sea bass Carly. Fishing. Yeah, yeah. Her her first uh, her first halibut ever, first legal halibut was a forty-two pounder. Oh, nice start. Well, wow. well bigger. Nice start. I mean, probably ten pounds bigger than any yeah. one I've ever had. You know, yeah, Jeez. yeah, forty-two pounder. Whopper. It's pretty That's crazy. A good one. Yeah, Dan in Scotts Valley has a question for you, Brian. Didn't hear anything about white sea bass. Hey. Yeah. Speaking of the Holy Grail, did the fishery drop off or just looking uh, offshore for these? Because I mean, your zone there for a long time, you know, Brandon Hayes right. just slaying them down yeah. in that San Onofre area. There, you know, we it's just all didn't hear that. This it's year. all based on on squid cycle. You yeah. know, and and I'll tell you, we don't. I'm not on top of that whole scene just because you know that fish is in and out. It's a lot of fishing at night. Yeah. You know, we just we we don't do that out of Dana or sport fishing. Are there hardcore sea bass guys out of Dana Point? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all it's all bait. It's all squid. It's all squid cycle stuff. So you know, we get in one of those good squid cycles again where that stuff's in on our stretch of beach. We've got perfect habitat. You know, for that squid to push in and to stay, there's been years that, you know, we've had just squid for months in our zone. And those sea bass guys get in there and work on a school of fish and kind of follow it up, you know, where where they need to, you know, catch that stuff in those different zones. But uh, we do catch, you know, sea bass. Obviously, there's fish that are always around, yeah. right? In, in the I was going to say, you run that some fun five, six days a week. How many sea bass have you seen this year? Yeah, well, we don't catch a whole lot of them. We catch a lot of juvenile fish. Juvenile, sure. Yeah, quite but a bit of that stuff. Ones that you're keeping. Legals, you know, I could probably count on one hand the, the number really? that we caught yeah. this, this year. Um, but, you know, that bigger fish is there. It's where It's around. It's around. So there's certainly that opportunity. But, you know, we don't have trips that specifically target. Yeah. Sea bass. We have well, guys that do, you know, you some of our four pack guys. guys. Four yeah, totally. Packs. Like Christian Sikas oh, on the Lexi, yeah. he'll, he'll, you know, target that if he needs to over at Clemania or Catalina or whatever. Yeah. But uh, on the coast, yeah, we see it. Yeah, we catch it. Do we target it? Not necessarily. Speaking of those uh, smaller operations like uh, Christian Sikas, uh, uh, is that booked through the landing? Yep. This, yep, you can four call the landing, he can packs. book it. You can go on his website and he can, you know, book you from there. But most of that stuff's best to check availability and whatnot through our office. Call yeah. the charter department. They can get you dialed in with that whole, at, that whole setup. At DanaWarsportFishing.com, yep. Yep. do they list all the boats? I know yes. we can link that right yeah, to the front page. Yeah, you can go right. Our, exactly. our website, Let's Talk Hookup. Yep, go online. It gives you the full rundown of uh, their rates, their availability, and all that kind For of stuff. For all the boats at Dana Wars. Yeah. Okay, so everything's listed from the it's four all packs all the way up to, all the way to whatever the you want to yep. do. That's pretty sweet. Nice stuff. Yep. Hey, when we come back, we're going to, speaking of Dana War Sport Fishing, going fishing, we're going to find out who's got those three quarter day passes. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Back in 1979, my parents started Fast Lane Sailing Center. They lived in a VW van in the parking lot and sold catamaran sailboats. And over the years, the shop has evolved. They've sold everything from windsurfers to barbecues, paddle boards, and trailers. Here's the point. For over 40 years, my parents, and eventually me, my brother Jared, and sister Ava, have been in the business of fun. 
and making memories on the water with friends and family. If something's in the shop, it's a product we use, are passionate and knowledgeable about, and want to share with you. We encourage you to come down to our shop, Fast Lane Kayaking on Mission Bay, and check out our huge selection of Hobie Mirage kayaks, accessories, and more. Now let's get you on the water, fishing with friends, enjoying the coast with your family, or exploring mountain lakes in solitude. In other words, having fun and making memories. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find a location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150, available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150, test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. For your next fishing adventure, check Point Loma Sport Fishing. They offer half-day trips on the Daily Double and full-day trips on the Mission Bell every day. Perfect for novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips on the American Angler, Vagabond, Intrepid, Independence, New Loan, T-Bird, Game Changer, and more. Visit PointLomaSportFishing.com where you can purchase tickets online. Want to go fishing? Point Loma Sport Fishing has you covered. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. Having a great time here this morning. All right. Captain Wooly's going to do us the honors. Flip that this. prize coin. Let's do it. Right. Right. Here we go. A texter today. Congratulations, cool. Matt from L.A. You got it, man. You're, yeah. Uh, you got uh, two passes. You're going fishing. You and a bud going fishing. Three-quarter day trips at a Dane Wharf Sport Fishing. Cool. Congratulations. Yeah, man. congratulations. So cool. And uh, and kind of give us a schedule. What's the winter schedule? Cool, cool. So winter schedule right now during the week, we have half day and three-quarter day boats every day. Half day departs during the week at 10 a.m. Three-quarter day leaves at 6. Half day, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. during the week. Sleep yep. On the weekends, hours. we have a three-quarter day boat. Same deal. Departs at 6 a.m. Double half day. Mm-hmm. One at 6.30 and then another one at 12. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And that's so, through the winter. That's through the winter. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, winter starts on Thursday of this week. So, okay. wow. yeah, huh? Good. We can start getting our sunshine back. For me yeah. yesterday morning when I walked out of the house, back. man, it was a little chilly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Cool, but cool. Uh, So, how do we book? Cool. Different ways. I mean, we're all over social media. You can uh, check out what we have going on online there, but the best way to book is online. You can go to danawarf.com, book half day, three quarter day, whale watch, whatever online. You can always call our office and uh, check in with those guys, kind of see what's going on, what's available as well. But uh, yeah, booking online is the best way yeah. to do that stuff. Yeah, and you can link it's that easy. right on the front page of the Let's Talk Hook Up website. Click on that Dana Wharf yep. banner. It takes you right there or right just go there. to Super Dana com. Yep. Yeah, yep. see all the boats and the full yeah. rundown. And then what are your days? I mean, if people say, I want to go fishing with that guy, yeah. he sounds really cool. I'm one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. Day. Come down. I, I take Tuesdays and Sundays are my days off. Those so are your days those off. Those are my two days. Okay. Kind of split them up and get business handled at home and whatnot. And so you came in errands. here on your day off. Oh, yeah, of course. Wow. Jam down here is and, easy. You, and all your call ins every Sunday, day and off. Day, yeah, wake up How in the morning that, and huh? go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So uh, any other days, but Tuesday and Sunday, you can go fishing with Brian. Come on down. On the Sum Fun. That's cool. How fun is that? Well, that's great. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Of course, we'll talk to you coming up this yeah, Sunday. Yeah, we'll talk to you next yeah, week and see what's going on. Yeah, it's sure. going to be fun. And don't forget, one week from the day, it's the big day. It's uh, it's going to be fun. And uh, it's, the, it's the Christmas Spectacular. So the best take from a text, best take from a call. Uh, we're going to have a lot of prizes rolling here, through here. That'll be cool. Uh, it's going to be next Sunday. But next Saturday... Captain Taro Takeuchi hey, from the Liberty. All right, going to cool. be here. Yeah, Taro's uh, cool. been doing a lot of work on the Liberty, yeah. and uh, they're getting gearing up for the the c- upcoming season here. So uh, Taro's going to tell you all about it. What's going on in the Liberty? We want to thank JP for all his hard work on the phones and on the board, and of course Adam for all he does 
on the Let's Talk Cookup app. Thank you, Adam, and all the guys, and of course, you out there, texters, callers, and just you listeners. Thanks for being with us and supporting Let's Talk Cookup. We'll see you next Saturday and Sunday right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Cookup app.